Welcome to the Classic Apostolic Preaching Channel. We have been collecting apostolic content through the years and we hope that you enjoy. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to get the latest content. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I wonder if we can do something. We've been doing this all night. And before I even got here, you can feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. And it was all because of prayer and expectation. So what I want to do right now for a moment, for about 30 seconds, let's see what God does. I wonder if we can just stretch our hands to the heavens. We don't need a piano. We don't need praise singers or worship leaders. But all you need is your voice and your faith. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to begin to proclaim some things in the atmosphere. I want you to use your prayer. Utilize. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Utilize your prayer. Utilize what God has given you. Come on, somebody begin to speak in tongues in this place. Allow the spirit of faith to catch fire in this house. And right now, in the name of Jesus, everything that you're dealing with, everything that you're going through, the stuff that you don't even realize that you're getting ready to walk into, God is getting ready to prepare your heart right now because of the faith that's in you. Come on, somebody cry out to God with a spirit of expectancy. Cry out to God as if he's getting ready to do it already. Cry out to God because you know he's working it out. Come on, somebody begin to pray in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, your family is dependent on your prayer right now. Your church is dependent on your intercession. Come on, somebody with the heart of worship, begin to stretch your hands and say, God, I need you in this place. I need you to break every shackle. Matter of fact, destroy it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, you might as well glorify him while you can. Clap your hands. Lord, we bless you this evening. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. What a powerful, powerful uh, spirit of the Lord that's in here in this place. There's something getting ready to, to take place. I might not even get to preach all the way. Amen, somebody. All it takes is somebody that's full of the Holy Ghost that says, I'm not going to settle for less tonight. All it takes is somebody that got the Holy Ghost. My, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Somebody that can say, I'm... I've been through too much. I've been through too much stuff. The devil's been fighting me all week. But I'm here because of the grace of God. God could have let me die. But instead he let me live. So while I live, I will lift my voice. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes of bondage. If you're here with some stuff, it can be destroyed by the lifting of your hands. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Anybody expecting something in this house? Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We're going to get into the word. I want to give honor to your, your host, Pastor, Pastor Henderson. Sister Arlena, thank you so much for the invitation. My wife sends her regards. Thank you so much. Our pastor sends his regards as well. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here with these beautiful people of section three, section two, section. I don't know. There's a lot of people. I see a lot of faces from different sections here. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to get into the word. Uh, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter uh, 4, verse 10. And I want to share with you my heart tonight. I just want to share before I get into the word that what I'm getting ready to preach tonight, God has placed it on my heart. I've preached this. I preached this, this uh, message uh, the first Sunday of the year at our church, and God really did some things. But this, this sermon has almost been... Uh, in, in so many words, resurrected for me. I have a new revelation on this, on, this, on this message. And I feel like somebody here, if you just hold on a little while, let me, let me dig a little 
little trench so that we can put some water in it so that we can flow downstream. Amen. I'm going to dig a little bit, but I need you to stay with me. Is that all right tonight? Amen. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 10. Amen. If you haven't said amen. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. Amen. Just for a few minutes, I want to preach to you, building a room for dead promises. Building a room for dead promises. Lay your Bibles down one more time. Let's lift our hands. Let's stretch it out, and let's let God know that whatever he is to do tonight, that we, he, he has our total, total uh, 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 permission. He can do whatever he wants. Come on and love on him for a moment. Tell him. <laughs> Have your way, Lord. Your word is already anointed. Anoint my lips, Lord. Anoint my mind. Let our hearts be accepted in Jesus' name. Clap your hands one more time. Amen. You may be seated. Building a room for dead promises. Building a room for dead promises. Amen. If you're familiar with this story, this story is about the Shunammite woman. Uh, amen. In, in, in uh, chapter 4 of 2 Kings, uh, there was a, a village in the land of Israel called Shunam, which was north of Jezreel and south of Mount Geboa. And the prophet Elijah, Elisha, excuse me, would pass through this village as he traveled. And while he passed there, uh, there was a woman that the Bible calls a great woman. Amen. And if you look up the word great in this context, it means that she had great wealth. She was well off. She, she was, she, she was uh, 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 a, a woman that was in that time uh, uh, well spent. Amen. And, but the Bible says that there's one thing that she did not have. And even though she had great wealth, she did not have any children. Amen. The Bible says, and it makes it plain, that she had no children. Well, every time Elisha would pass through this woman would give him something to eat and the bible says that as often as he passed by he will go to the house and eat bread amen and so one day the woman and her husband were having a conversation and she looks at him and says there's something different about this man there's something different about this man that we see all the time so she said i perceive that he is a holy man of god which means that this man there's some he's got something this man is a holy man i don't know i'm not sure the bible doesn't say that she knew who elisha was but she felt in her spirit she discerned in her spirit that he was a holy man of god can i tell somebody tonight that if you've got a man of God in your life, won't you go ahead and, and make sure that you make some time for him? Won't you make sure that you discern what's getting ready to happen in the spirit? When you come to church and you've come with an expectant heart, God can do anything. And if you allow the man of God to preach a word to you, God will deliver you. Amen. Somebody clap your hands. Amen. I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Then she concludes with this. He said, so let's build a room for him. Let's build a room for the man of God. And the Bible says if you look in different translations that they build an upper room. Amen. And that can preach all by itself. So the woman and her husband built a room for Elisha. And one day when Elisha came again to Shunem, he goes back to this woman's home. And the Bible says that he turned into the chamber to lay there. Now, this woman, she has built a room. For the man of God and she has made it evident that she wants the presence of God in her home. Amen somebody. She may not have all that she desired but one thing was for certain that she had made an investment. She had planted a seed if you will to assure the glory of God was dwelling in her home. Amen. I don't know about you young people but I don't know uh, how many hyphen we have in the house. Any, any young adults. How many hyphen have your own place? About one. Amen. Amen. Two. Now, let me tell you something, and I expected that tonight. Because, parents, I'm going to get to you in a moment, but I want to speak to the young people. Even though you're living with your parents, you may be living with family members or what have you, make sure that you have a place where God is welcome. It does not matter what's going on in that home, but if you have a heart, and if you have two knees that you can get on and you can pray down the power of God and you can allow God to have liberty in your life, in your room, in your home, anything can happen. 
Does anybody believe that tonight? Does anybody believe that tonight? Make sure it's dwelling in your home. Parents, if you're here tonight, make sure that you have a place where God is able to come in and have his liberty, have his way. Wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and have your whole household on their faces crying out to him. Because you never know when something's getting ready to take place. Somebody ought to be building a room. Building a room. Amen. For your dead promises. The Bible says that Elisha is uh, uh, telling his servant Gehazi to bring the woman to him. And the Bible says that when he had called her, she stood before him. And Elisha tells Gehazi, say now to her, look, you have uh, been concerned with us and you have, you have taken care of us. You have, you have made uh, us welcome at your home. Matter of fact, you didn't just make us welcome. You made this our home as well. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak to the king on, on your behalf? Do you want me to, to, to have the commander of the army come and help you in some type of way? And her words were this. She said, uh, 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 no, I dwell upon my own people. This woman, she was humble. She had a heart uh, to give. She had a heart that, that desired just to bless somebody else. And so he said, what then is to be done for this woman? And Gehazi said, actually, she has no, no, no son. She has no, no child. And her husband is old. Amen. So Elijah tells this woman about this season according to the time of life. You shall embrace a son. Now we come to the place where this woman, she has not asked for anything. She has not uh, told Elisha anything. But there, the spirit of God began to move. Because you can tell when, when, when God is speaking to the man of God. Because he will start speaking stuff that you had already forgot about. That you thought was dead already. He'll start speaking stuff into existence that you had no idea even lived anymore. Because you had gave up on it. Well, God, he didn't answer it. So I guess it's dead. It's not actually going to happen. And so this woman gets upset and she says, look here, I've done so much for you. I've taken care of you and your servant. I've welcomed you into my home. Why would you lie to me? Don't, don't play with me. Don't, don't. I've been too kind to you. For you to, to lie to me. And he said, no, don't worry about it. By this time next year, you will bear a son. And as the Bible says, uh, this woman at that time next year, she had bared a son. Amen. But the story does not end there. The story does not end there. And so one day, the, the boy, he's grown now. He's, he's much older. And he's working in the field with his father. And the Bible says that he says to his father, my head, my head. And the father tells one of the young men to take his son to his mother. And then when he brought him to his mother, the Bible says that he sat on her knees till noon and then he died. After reading what has transpired in this story so far, you can't help but ask the question, why? Is anybody here tonight? You can't help but ask the question, why? I'm very confused because first, she wasn't even bothering God. With the fact that she desired a child. She had actually given up on it. Because she wasn't even talking about it. Until the man of God had brought it into existence. He, he talked about it. She didn't even ask for it. It was dead. And then he spoke it into existence. And it was alive. Then all of a sudden it died again. Am I talking to anybody? Who come to service after service. Convention after convention. Camp meeting after camp meeting. And you hear, it, you hear a preacher speaking to your ear as you're praying at the altar. You ain't bothering nobody. Hey, God's going to do this for you. God's going to do that for you. And you begin to cry out to God and say, I receive it. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. And then you go home to the same mess. You go home to the same doubt, to the same fear, to the same disruptive spirit. And you're wondering, God, why? God is not a liar, but is somebody else lying because it's not happening? You telling me that I've got everything coming for me, but I'm still stuck in this mess. I'm, I'm still stuck in this stuff. The Bible says that Joseph had a dream. God gave Joseph a dream, but God did not show Joseph what he had to go through to get to the end of the dream. What I'm telling you tonight is this. Young person, if you give up now. You may not reach to the place where God has called you to because you because what's happening now is not what God is trying to show you. It's going to happen later. But if you stay in the plan of the master's hand, if you stay in the plan of the master's plan, and you say, even though it looks dead now, even though it's not here now, I will trust in the Lord. I will believe in the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Somebody give him praise. Lord, why? 
Lord, why would you give me the promise of a child after years and years of shattered dreams and broken promises and unmet expectations just to let the promise die again? Why? And I'm reminded of the story of Lazarus. What the indication is that God is waiting for some things to die. You didn't catch that. God is waiting for some things to die. No, it's not to hurt you. No, it's not to destroy you. But it's to take you to another level of the dimension of faith. Because. Because. If God was to give you what you asked for right away, you will be a spoiled Christian. If you ask your parents and you said, Mom, look, they have this new iPad that's coming out. Matter of fact, forget the iPad. They have this new iPhone 7 that's coming out. And quiet as it's kept, I don't even know when it's coming out. But I need that in my life. Am I speaking anybody's language tonight? I need that in my life. I've got to have it. Please, please, please. And it seems like they ignore you. Okay, all right. And you try to remind them and you say, hey, d- hey Dad, I cut the grass last night at 12 o'clock and nobody even heard me cut the grass like can I really get that iPhone 7 you woke up this morning the trash was taken out hey mom I made some greens last night see y'all ain't from where I'm from y'all don't know about that mom I cooked dinner I cooked some chicken some fried chicken I put it on mom I did everything you asked me to do and all of a sudden you start forgetting about it and you're like, well, oh, well, they're ignoring me. They really don't care. They don't, they don't care that I don't have an iPhone 7. I'll just stick with this Android. I'll stick with this, this uh, flip phone. Amen. If you have a flip phone, you need to be delivered tonight. <laughs> Amen. And so what happens is you forget about it. You forget about it. it it's, it's past your mind now. You don't even think about it anymore. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you wake up on Christmas morning. <laughs> Brother JJ, I'm going to use you, okay? You wake up on Christmas morning and you see a little box, a little box that says I-P-H-O-N-E with a seven at the end of it. Amen. God's complete number. Come on, somebody. And all of a sudden, you open that baby and it's beautiful. You love it. You put all your numbers in it. You got your iCloud set up. You go home. You talk. Hey, man, I got the new iPhone. And all of a sudden, you go to work, and then you say, hey, bro, let's go to church. You, you and your friend getting ready to go to church. And he's taking your stuff to the car, and it falls off your iPad, and it breaks. That's actually a true story. <laughs> Amen. We were on our way to camp meeting. Brother JJ broke my phone. I'm trying to, trying, to, trying to bring some things back to life. Amen. But my point is tonight, you go through all of this, and all of a sudden, you, it, it's gone. It's, it's, it's not there anymore. It's broken. God, what happened? It's dead. And this woman is dealing with this situation. She's trying, to, she, she's trying to stay faithful. She's trying to have faith. She's trying to love God. She's trying to believe what the man of God has said to her. And now I'm reminded of the story because God is saying, look, I, I, I've got to elevate your faith. I, I've got to get you to go from glory to glory. You cannot be here stagnated and getting to here. You can't do that. God says something's got to die in order for you to get to here where I'm at. In the 11th chapter of the book of John, disciples made an inquiry pertaining to the health and the condition of Lazarus, which he and his sisters Martha and Mary were friends of Jesus. Martha and Mary had sent for Jesus to come and save their brother because he was sick. But the Bible, but Jesus, excuse me, says, uh, but the Bible says that Jesus wasn't there with them at the time he was with his, his disciples and intentionally he waited for Lazarus to die. Amen. If you look at John 11 and 6, it says, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Just because God hasn't answered you, just because God, you can't hear his voice, just because you can't feel him does not mean that he's not listening to you and does not mean that he's not on his way. Amen. Somebody, did I lose somebody in here tonight? I said, just because you can't hear God, just because you can't feel God. Just because you don't know where he's at does not mean that he's not there listening to you. That he's not coming. He's not coming to your aid. He's not coming to your need. Well, Lord, I prayed that you would come and intervene. I prayed that you would fix my problem. I prayed that you would come to my rescue. Where are you? 
Have anybody asked God, where are you? I know you're young. Some of you are young, but I, I know you deal with some stuff. I know you deal with some mess, some stuff that you, that you think in your mind that maybe God isn't even real because I can't even feel him. But the Bible says that if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. When was the last time you got on your face, not at church, but at home, when you start building an altar in your room and you start to build an altar of faith, hallelujah, on your knees and begin to pray and you begin to fast and you begin to seek the face of God, not because pastor was watching you, not because youth pastor was watching you, but because you had a heart of worship, because you're in love with Jesus, because you have something that's in your heart that says, I've got to have an encounter with God. When was the last time? Why haven't you answered my prayer, God? Why would you allow my promise to die when all along God is asking the question, do you, do, you, do you trust me? You see, it's easy to come to church and you are good all the time. The beat is just right all the time. You are good and give God praise from emotion. But when people give up on you, and they lie about you and they talk about you and they start rumors about you and they say you're not going to make it why are you going to church why are you even living for God I feel the Holy Ghost in this I'm speaking to somebody and you get to the place to where you, you forget what God told you in the midnight hour you see if you're not praying you can't hear his voice how, how am I to know that God is on my side if I'm not spending any time with him how am I to know that he's fighting for me if I'm not in my word? Being reminded that all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. How am I to know if I don't even know God myself? Am I speaking to somebody here tonight that's got some promises that have been given to you? But they've been clouded by doubt and fear and mistakes and stuff that you've done. I know that you fail. I know that you made some mistakes. But God is able and just to forgive you your sins. Do you trust me? Do you trust me with your life? Do you trust me with your dreams? Do you trust me? The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 16 that a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. I'm getting ready to preach. I want you to catch this. Please, please pay attention. This was the revelation that God gave me. The Shunammite woman had a gift. The Bible says that a man's gift maketh room for him. The Shunammite woman had a gift. She had the gift of giving. If you notice, this woman gave without any reservation, without any expectation. She just gave. Because it was in her heart to give. What gift do you have tonight to give toward the kingdom of God? Are you utilizing your gift? Are you, have you activated your gift? Are you exercising your gift? And what I've come to preach to you today is that this woman had a gift and her gift made room for the preacher. But the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. Stay with me. And in my mind, I can see this woman cradling her child now, and she's wondering why did I have a dream, and all of a sudden it comes to pass, and just for it to die again, amen. And I can see Jesus on his way to Martha and Mary, just hoping that they would catch what he is trying to impart to them. And it's the type of faith that this Shunammite woman in Second Kings has. And she, she may not have understood what and why, but she still has faith. And the Bible says that Jesus said in John 11 and 15 concerning uh, 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 Lazarus and he was speaking to the disciples. He said, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. To the intent that ye may believe. How many of you are believing tonight that God is working everything out for your good? That no matter what weapon is formed against you. That when the Bible says it won't prosper, that is what it means. When God promised you something, that's what he did. That's what he said. It's going to come to pass. You just hold on to it, young person. You just keep coming to church, young person. You just keep living for God. You keep following after God. You keep chasing after him. Amen. God asked Ezekiel, he said, can these bones live? And Ezekiel replied, he said, Lord, you know. 
Lord, you know. God didn't laugh. He, he didn't chuckle. He didn't, he didn't forget the conversation. He gave him a challenge. And he told him, he said, prophesy to these bones. If you believe tonight, if you have the Holy Ghost tonight, won't you start prophesying over those dead promises? Won't you start going into the room of your backslidden father? I feel the Holy Ghost here. And your backslidden mother. Pour oil on their pillow and begin to lay your hands on them and say, in the name of Jesus, God, you promised me that you're going to give me my parents. You promised me you're going to give me my siblings. You promised me you were going to give me my life back. You promised me you were going to give me my child back. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking over this dead situation. I'm speaking over this dead thing that the devil said it was dead. It's over with. It's done. It's done. It's done. But God said that you are the resurrection and you are the life. So I believe your word. Come on, somebody lift your hands. The Holy Ghost is here. God is getting ready to resurrect a backslidden life. God is getting ready to make some things that were dead live again. Come on, young person, you're on the edge tonight. You almost gave up last week, but today you got faith again. Won't you reach out and say, God, I'm here. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you, and you can make me like you. Amen. Praise God, you may be seated. Listen, listen, listen. What this world is desperate for today and in desperate need of is young people that are full of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can receive it tonight. And I believe that when it comes down to the revival that's getting ready to strike California, that it's going to start with the young people. 1915, there was a great revival that hit L.A. And we're in the middle of L.A. right now. It didn't start with a concert. Hello, somebody. It didn't start with a program, but it started with prayer and fasting. You want to know how to build a room? Get on your knees. Come to the church when nobody's looking, when nobody's here. Turn off your phone. Turn off your iPad. Disconnect from, I, from, from Facebook and, 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 and all of these other uh, 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 social media programs for a week or two. And see what God can do with your life. See how, how, how uh, uh, loud you can hear his voice then. I'm going to be transparent with you. God spoke to me the other day and I was praying. I said, God, why can't I, why can't I feel you? I, I need a word from you. Lord. I need to hear your voice. And he spoke to me. He said, I, can, I will speak to you. But you're too busy on the internet. You're too busy on, on Facebook and, 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 lo and looking over, sending pictures. I just had a child, and I was very excited. And I was posting a lot of pictures, and I was just going back and forth and looking. And, and outside of work, I, I would go back to my phone, and I would catch myself, keep looking at my phone, and keep looking. And God said, look, when was the last time you got into your word this week? When was the last time you prayed to me? You see, a lot of times it, it's, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. It's easy to fall into sin. It's easy to fall into confusion. It's easy to fall into stuff that you know you have no business to when you have a disconnected life with God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm not preaching against Facebook. I'm not your pastor. I'm not preaching against Facebook. I got a Facebook. I got an Instagram. I got a Twitter. I've got all of that. But what needs to happen is there has to be a balance. If you want some things to live in your life again, you got to get on your knees. You got to turn that phone off. You got to find a place in God. You... If you want to hear his voice in this generation, and you want to see miracle signs and wonders, there's got to be a transformation of the mind, a renewing of the mind. You've got to find a place in God where you say, God, here I am. I give all myself to you. Here I am. I'm not going to get confused with everything that's going on, but here I am. I'm not going to be distracted with everything that's going on, but here I am. Here I am. I'm so glad that this shooting of my woman Remember that she built a room. And I don't know if she realized it or not, but what was going on at the time was that something was stirring in the spirit. God was trying to show her that had her miracle not have died, had her promise 
not have died. Had her dream not have died, it would have deprived her from the revival that was about ready to take place in her home. God is waiting for some things to die. God was trying to take her faith to a new dimension. Why? Because while she was making room for the kingdom, her gift was making room for her. While you are serving in the kingdom and you're singing, you're leading worship and you're coming and you're serving as an usher or you're cleaning the restrooms or you're coming just to, to, just to uh, 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 be parking lot security, God is making room for you. Your gift is making room for you. Serve where you can. Do what you can in the kingdom. Let God know that here I am. I've got, I've got to serve you in all that I have. I've got to be a good steward of my time, a good steward of my talents, a good steward of my faith. Hello, somebody. She remembered that she built a room. So she takes the dead promise to the room that she built for the man of God. And she lays him on the bed. And then she shuts the door. What I love about this woman is that she had great faith. She had great faith. And you see, when you build a room, you're building on your knees. Amen. We've been talking about prayer for a while now. You're building a uh, 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 while you're fasting and pushing the plate away, amen. You're building while you're disconnecting from social media and connecting to the throne room of God. And when you're building this room of faith, those dead things that you've been carrying, the unanswered prayers, the, 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 those things that have been prophesied to you, those desires of your heart that you've been longing for, the promises that have been bombarded by fear and confusion that are seemingly dead, you've been embracing them and instead of taking them to a place of doubt and instead of taking them to a place of bitterness and instead of quitting you take them to the room that you built by faith so she takes the promise and she lays him on the bed and in the room and the, that she built and she shuts the door and so she begins her journey to Elisha but before she leaves the Bible says that her husband turns to her and says wherefore wilt thou go to him today he understood he knew where she was going he knew what was going on. He, they realized that the child was dead. And, and, and he said that it is neither new moon nor Sabbath. In other words, he said, why today? It's not Sunday. There's no church. Pastor's not going to be there. Why are you, gonna, why, why, why are you going to, to even bother going down? It's dead already. It's done. It's over with. But this woman, she had faith. She said, it shall be well. It shall be well. What are you dealing with tonight? Where you have enough faith to say, you know what, I, I don't even know how it's going to work up, but it, it's going to work out anyway. Because the God that I serve is greater than anything. He's greater than any situation. He's greater than any doubt and fear. Because God is not the author of confusion. But he's a God of a sound mind. He gives us a sound mind, the Bible said. Is there anybody in this place that has a sound mind that you know that God is working for you? Even though it's not working out right now, but you know what's working for you. Amen, somebody. This woman had great faith, and this is the type of faith that Jesus wanted Martha and Mary to have. Because when Jesus showed up, they said, have you, uh, had you been here sooner, Jesus, my brother would not have died. Had you been here sooner, my situation wouldn't be the way that it is. Where have you been, Jesus? But Jesus said, he's not dead. He's just sleeping right now. I've come to hit the snooze button on some promises and some dead stuff that you got in your life. I've come to let somebody know that God has everything under control. I've come to let somebody know that you don't have to backslide and give up on God. Why? Because God has not given up on you. The song said he's never felt me yet. I have a problem with that. There's an expectation there. He's never felt me yet. The Bible says he will never leave you nor what? If he says what he says, he means what he says. If God promised you that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, it's not yet. It's never. It's not yet. It's never. Amen. I had a friend. He told me his testimony. And actually, the, the, the man that, that talked him out of, of doing this deed is here tonight. Amen. And he's a miracle in himself. 
this young man, he had, he had a life that was just spiraling out of control. And he was living, just living a bad life. He had a mother that was in church and people that were praying for him, people that were uh, uh, seeking God for him. He had a pastor that loved him. And he had committed, uh, he had a thought of committing suicide. But there was a young person that was full of the Holy Ghost. They said, I know that you got some stuff going on. I know that, that, that life has, has brought you to a place where you feel like those things that you thought that you could do, that you can't do anymore, that, you, that, that you're no good, that you, that you don't have a promise, that you don't have a future, that you don't have anything going for you just because of this and that thing and this thing happened in the past and you fell this time and this happened, but God is fighting for you. I'm talking to somebody in this place that thought that God had given up on you and you don't even want to live for God anymore. But you are here for a reason tonight for the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to somebody. You ought to lift your hands in this place. You ought to cry out to God. You ought to say, God, I'll, I'll stand in the gap for somebody. I'll believe again. I know you've got it working for me. I know you've got it working for me. It's going to be okay. It's going to work out anyway. Come on, lift your hands. Close your eyes in this place. Open up your mouth and begin to love on God in this house. It's not even in my notes, but somebody's got to touch God right now. He's going to restore you. He's going to restore your faith. Don't give up. Don't give up. He loves you. He loves you. God don't make mistakes. He knows what he's doing. And even when you fall on your face, he still knows what he's doing. Even when they've given up on you, he still knows what he's doing. He still knows. He still knows. Grab somebody next to you and grab them by the hand and begin to pray in faith over them. Come on, somebody begin to intercede for your, your person next to you. Begin to pray in faith. God's been trying to call somebody to the ministry, but you don't think you're good enough. God never called the qualified, but he always qualifies the called. You ought to chase after him. Come on, here's your moment. Chase after him. Chase after him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God speaking to somebody. Answer the call. Come on, build that room. Build that room. Come on, your family's depending on you. Revival's depending on you. Your church is depending on you. Your youth group is depending on you. Your little brother, your little sister's depending on you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, come on, come on. I can keep preaching. But if you're at the brink of your breakthrough, go ahead and go for it. If you're at the brink of your breakthrough, go ahead and go for it. How much faith do you got? How much faith do you got?
Come on, everybody standing. Everybody standing. Brother JJ, come, come up for me. In Jesus' name. Listen, let me speak to you for a moment. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This woman, she, she, began, she began her journey to Elisha. And as she gets up into Mount Carmel, even when she was in the far distance, the Bible says that Elisha recognized who she was. And called Gehazi saying, that's the Shunammite woman. I want you to go down there and find out if everything's okay. I want you to check on her, make sure everything is, 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 everything is good. Amen. And so Ge Gehazi goes and, and meets her and, and asks of the, the well-being of her uh, and her family. And this time, it was a familiar, uh, familiar response to what she had told her husband. And she had told her husband, if you remember, it, it shall be well. But now she has elevated her faith to another dimension. And she said, it is well, knowing that nothing was working out for her. Faith is believing on things when they're not even alive. Believe in them as alive, but they're dead. It is well for the Holy Ghost in this place. I know I'm speaking to you, but God's speaking to me. She said it is well. Why did she say it was well? Because she knew that since she built a room, See, you can have confidence in God when you know that you've already prayed. You've already fasted. You've already been seeking God. You already have a relationship with God. You see, it's those who are doubting. It's those that just aren't sure if their relationship with God is where it needs to be. But my message to you tonight is it, 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 can, it can be. You can get where you need to be with God right here, right now. She had a, an assurance. She knew that if I prayed, if I trust in God with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways, acknowledge him. He will direct my path. She knew. She had a sure foundation in God. She knew. Sister Sabrina, she knew that God was going to work it out for her. Like he did for you. She knew. She knew that God was going to work it out for her. But she was still human. She still had to go to the man of God. She still... She still had hurt because she had to carry her baby as he, as he was dead. The stuff, the stuff that she was carrying was dead. The stuff that she was holding on to was dead. But the promise was that it was supposed to live. God, if you promise me that it's going to live, it's going to live. It's dead now, but it's going to live. She knew that as long as she had a room, as long as she had a man of God in her life, the promises could live again. So the woman takes Elisha to the room where the boy was lying. And the Bible says that Elisha shut the room. He shut the door in the room. He, 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 he laid uh, uh, his body on the, uh, on the little boy's body and began to put his hands on his hands, his head on his head. And, and the Bible says that the, uh, the, uh, that the, uh, that the boys uh, uh, began to, to wax warm. And uh, 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 the man of God went out the room and began to pace. And what ended up happening? Anybody know the end of the story? The young boy lived again. But that's not the miracle. That's not the miracle. The miracle is this. The Bible says that a man's gift will make room for him. Her gift built a room. But even though, listen to me clearly, even though the intention was for the glory of the kingdom. Even though she built a room for the man of God. God's intention was for the room to be built to bring revival to her family. Understand this. This woman had a dream. She wanted a child. She gave up on it. Prophesied that you would have a child. She had, she had hope again. The child comes. The child dies, Brother Peter. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, 
there goes that fear again. Is God real? Is, is he real? You might have some doubts, but don't get discouraged. It's okay. He is real. God is alive. He is fighting for you. He is working out things for your good. The woman's gift, the woman's gift was that she had a giving heart. Her gift built the room. But God said, hey, you wanted a child? I had to kill the child just to let you know that I can make him live again. But I want you to know, I want you to know that the room that you built for the man of God, that's the room for your child. That's the room for your promise. That's the room for your promise. You built it out of the kindness of your heart because you got a gift. But I'm allowing you to keep that upper room for your promise. Now when you go to that room, there's no longer dead things there. There's only things that are living. Because your gift made room for you. These altars are open. I want somebody to start building a room. I want somebody to start allowing your faith to be elevated in this house. God is getting ready to make it happen for you. He created you from the dust of the earth. But he said, just because you're dust doesn't mean I don't care. Just because you come from the dirt don't mean I don't love you. I love you more than your heart could even imagine before, more than your mind could even fathom. You'll shut, I tell you. Come on, if you have faith, if you're a youth pastor or, or, or a youth worker, can you come lay hands on these young people? God is getting ready to restore somebody's faith tonight. I want revival in my home. I want revival on my job. But God, before I get revival, I've got to build a room. So here I am. Here I am. I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh God, I believe. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Your satire. Come on, come on, somebody, somebody. Wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, oh, oh. take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you, you can make me Come on, somebody's on the brink of breakthrough. Come on, break all the way through, all the way through. All the way through, all the way through. In his God's gonna give you a, some faith that's unshakable. Come on, come on, somebody, come on, come on. I'm changed. Yes, Jesus. And that's where I belong. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. 